my lovelies welcome 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 or welcome back to my channel i am portia i am a multi-genre writer poet and arthritis warrior living and writing in virginia originally from washington dc but most importantly i'm the president of your writers water club where we meet on wednesday nights at 9 p.m eastern i am so glad to be in front of you all today filming a video about my may goals and intentions and i know this is a few days late um but the way that the first of this month fell and this was just the first opportunity i've gotten to go ahead and jump in and talk about what i plan to do uh writing and writing adjacent wise this month so hopefully i won't be before you too long uh i've taken a few notes here so if i'm looking off to the side please forgive me for that <sighs> So let's get into it. First things first, what I will work on for the month of May are my big Q2 writing goals. Now, I did not do a video about quarter two goals, but I've talked about them pretty extensively in previous live streams. So if you are one of my regulars, especially on my Wednesday night live streams, then you've probably heard at least some of these. Now, first things first, I have a poetry manuscript in the works. That's one of my bigger projects. I don't want to speak too much about it, but it's coming along quite nicely. And at some point I will be able to make a separate video and just tell you all a little bit more about that, when and where you can expect to find it and how things are coming along for that project. Next thing for you too, I have two, well, actually technically three, major essay submissions. So I write poetry and essay mostly, although I do also write some short fiction. So I have poetry manuscript stuff in one genre, and then I have three major essay submissions for quarter two, one that will be completed and submitted by the end of this month, and two which will be mostly drafted and due in the following month, which is June. Now, as far as personal writing adjacent goals, what we have on the menu is, and this is writerly, but this leads to something that's slightly writer adjacent. So one of my big, big goals is my newsletter, Chronically Portia. Some of you who are regulars on the stream might be familiar with that. A link is downstairs in the info bar. And what that is, is that is my personal newsletter where I discuss all things chronic illness, disability, health, wellness, things of that nature is what I write about. And it's both from my personal perspective as a person with chronic illness and disability issues, as well as just somebody who has some background in health journalism, in reporting, and also in writing essays. So there's a lot to dig into there, and I know that you all will enjoy it. So the link is down there. So if that's something that interests you at all, I do encourage you to sign up on the email list. So when the first issue comes out very soon, you will it will be right there directly in your inbox and you won't have to worry about trying to find it. Now, with that said, writing adjacent things, this month actually is Psoriatic Arthritis Awareness Month. Now, psoriatic arthritis is what I live with every day. It's a form of arthritis. There are over 100 types of arthritis. I know that prior to my diagnosis, when someone said arthritis, my immediate thought was osteoarthritis, um, because that's what most people think of as something that affects older, elderly people. And that is one very valid type of arthritis, but there are over 100 other types, including juvenile arthritis and many other autoimmune types of arthritis, which is what I have. My autoimmune system basically attacks itself and causes me a lot of issues. Now, I go into that a little bit in a video that I shot um, a week or two ago about my infusions, but we'll get into that in its own separate video. But I will be talking about a lot of that stuff. But by this being Psoriatic Arthritis Awareness Month, I really want to get into a lot of awareness work. Now, some of that will be written. Some of that will be appearing in the newsletter, but a lot of that will also be on psoriaticarthritis.com, which I'll make sure that I also link to that in the description box below. 
I am a newly minted writer for that site, and I'm really, really excited to share my experiences as well as just to share some information for people who want to know a little bit more about it. And I suggest it for people who have other autoimmune diseases, um, especially folks who have or are a family member or friend of someone who has any of the seronegative spondyloarthritis, which that is your um, lupus, your crystallizing arthritis, any of your spondylitis, which are spine-affected arthritis. Um, so those are mostly in the same family. It, it depends a lot on different things because sometimes when you're talking treatments, things get broken up a little differently, um, but these are autoimmune issues that are in the same family. Um, I say that because especially people of color and Black people, uh, we tend to have autoimmune diseases that fall under these categories. Um, another one which I did not know for a long time was actually autoimmune is gout. So uh, I hope to spread some awareness to psoriatic arthritis, which is something that I had never heard of prior to my diagnosis. Um, it is a form of arthritis that also comes with psoriasis. Now, that said, it's um, you don't you can have one more than the other. For me, I have more arthritis and pain issues than psoriasis, although I have both. Um, so I do want to get more into that. Also, May is Mental Health Awareness Month. And one of the other diagnoses that I live with, I live with anxiety and depression, uh, which were actually diagnoses that I had prior to my psoriatic arthritis diagnosis. So that's definitely something that I will be talking more about probably here, but definitely writing about in the newsletter and writing for, I've written about those things for a couple of other publications in the past, and I'll probably be writing about some of those things again over the month of May. So that's writing, writing adjacent things for the most part. There'll be some other surprises. There's some other stuff that I can't quite talk about yet that'll be going on, but those are kind of the big things that I'm focused on. Uh, a lot of content for the newsletter, a lot of health-related and chronic illness content. Um, I have a few really big submissions coming up in June, one at the very end of April that are essay-related, a couple of them peer-reviewed, so I need to really get working very hard on those things and the poetry manuscript, which is a lot of things. Now, with that out of the way and with those things explained, Let's talk briefly about what I'll be doing less of in May. Now, I believe that you can't set goals and intentions without having at least an understanding of some things that you want to do less of. And for me, I have a couple of things here that are going to seem, possibly seem, a little bit counterintuitive, but I want to explain. One of my monthly goals for May and something that I hope to be very intentional about for the rest of this year, actually, and moving forward is taking less writing classes. I love writing classes. I adore them. If somebody's having a writing class, if it's free or even if it's not free, if I can afford it, if I can make it, I, you know, especially now, the last what, 14 or so months since we've mostly been at home and a lot of things have been virtual. I've just been taking classes, not just all over the country, all over the world. The most recent class that I just finished is an Afrofuturism class that was absolutely outstanding and excellent. I have zero regrets about taking that class. That was a niche specialty creative writing class that was about Afrofuturism that was done so excellently. It was um, the teacher that I had for that was based in London. That was something that I did on Wednesday afternoons. I can't speak highly enough about that class. It was absolutely fabulous. It was a six-week course. I would take it all over again every time she offers it if I could. That said, 
it's not that I'll never take another writing class again. It's that I want to be a lot more intentional. And I found that I was not being intentional enough with the classes that I was taking. And I found myself in a situation where I feel that for me, and I know this is different for every writer, for every person, for me, a lot of times my time is better spent doing the actual writing instead of attending so many writing classes. That's going to be different for everybody. For me, I need to put that time into if I'm going to attend something, then it needs to be something that is going to be a bit more challenging or I'm going to be beginning with an end in mind, doing more fellowship type of things, doing things that are specifically geared to the types of content that I do, the types of writing and that are specific to a genre or a type of writing or taught by somebody that I really want to take something, but it has to be very specific and not just my love of writing classes overflowing into me taking a writing class a couple of times a week because I'm finding that between the fatigue of my chronic illness and me taking so many writing classes that it's actually cutting down on the actual writing time that I have. And I can't let that happen. So what I'm going to be doing for May and spilling over into the rest of the year, I'm going to be more intentional about the writing classes that I take. And I will be cutting way down on writing classes that I'm participating in. And just a note about that, for people who are newer writers or for people who have not had the opportunity to take very many classes. I never want to come across like I'm saying that writing classes are not worth the time because they absolutely are. And there's a lot of fabulous classes out there. And I think right now when classes are more accessible than ever to people who have disabilities or have a tight schedule or have children or are caregivers, I think this is an excellent time to take writing classes. I personally had to evaluate the amount of time I spent in classes with the rest of the things on my plate and I needed to cut down for myself. And I also need to not hide behind being a student. And when I say hide behind being a student, that's nothing against being a student of writing, being a student of literature. But for me, I'm at a place in my writing career where I need to spend more time in the work and not using taking a lot of classes as a either procrastination or a a way of kind of subconsciously or unbeknownst to myself, I'm telling myself that I don't have the skill yet and I don't have it within me to get into the writing and just sit my butt down in the chair and do the work. So I need to do more of the sitting down and doing the work of the writing as opposed to being in writing classes so much. So that's what I hope to accomplish for May and throughout 2021 is to be very intentional and decisive about what writing classes I take. And there will be far, far, far fewer of them than there has been. And a lot more submissions. So um, for those of you who have not been around, I make a list every quarter with my deadlines. Um, This list that I'm looking at is already a little bit out of date. Um, Had some things in April. Some I hit, some I didn't hit, but this needs to be updated with a couple of other things. Um, Take out some things I didn't hit, put in some new deadlines, but this is basically um, an idea for me of where I'm going. Um, The exception to the writing class rule this is me being intentional about this, is that um, I do want to, I talked, pardon me, I talked on my uh, latest stream, my latest Wednesday night stream about wanting to take um, a couple of master classes. And that I feel like is doable for me. I'm not going to overdo it. I'm not going to take a huge amount at once, but taking a few of those because I have an ability to do it self-paced and to look at my week and if I have not gotten a lot of if I've not gotten a lot of writing done or not hit my writing goals for that particular week then I can I don't have to do the class it's something that's asynchronous that I don't have to do at a specific time 
So that's what I'm talking about, structured Zoom or Google Meet or classes where I have to tune in at a certain time for a certain amount of hours. There will be much less of that. Speaking of time, I want to talk quickly about my time tracking goals for May. Um, I am moving away from word count goals. Um, I have been thinking about this a lot since, since late last year. I would say I started thinking in October or November, but definitely by December, I was taking a look at word count tracking and it not being what I need for my writing right now. Because I'm a fast writer, I can type quickly, but word counts, in my case, because I write multi-genre, word counts do not encompass the amount of work I've gotten done, especially as somebody who actively writes a lot of poetry. Because poetry doesn't typically... Um, we don't typically do a lot of word counts in poetry. For for me, I, some people may, but for how I do it, um, I'm not doing a lot of word counts in my poetry. Um, so as a method of tracking, word counts don't work for me because word counts only tend to um, pick up work I'm doing in certain genres and I feel like I'm doing way less than I am. Uh, and then I start to feel like I'm not being productive enough and it puts me on one of those hamster wheels of I'm not doing enough and then it becomes bad for my anxiety. So what I'm going to be doing for me is I'm going to be leaning into a bit more time tracking and time blocking. I've been doing time blocking for a few years now. I am going to apply that to my writing. Um, I have not worked out all the math yet, so that may be its own video or at some point either in the middle of the month or towards the end of the month when I do a progress video again we'll talk a little bit about how I ended up figuring out the math and if I'm counting in hours or in number of sprints but it is definitely going to be a time-based count as opposed to a word-based count so if that is something that you do let me know in the comments how you track your time. If you track your time instead of or even in addition to word counts, I would love to know how you do that and how that works out for you. So please let me know in the comments. I'm open to uh, new ideas, new ways to take account. I am a very analog person. I tend to write things in a planner or a journal, but I am not at all opposed to having a digital solution or something that will spit me out a chart or a graph of some type to be able to track my time. So I think that is about all that I had for today. Um, I want to thank folks for coming and hanging out in my streams and on this video. And just in addition to the time tracking, let me know down below what some of your goals are for this month or even for this quarter. And just let me know what your plans are and how you're doing. I would love to start a dialogue down in the comments about how we're doing with our goals and intentions for the month and for this quarter. Thanks so much, my lovelies. I will be talking to you again soon. Have a great day. Bye-bye.